Hello, this is How Nobody Would Handle It, or Fixing More Hammer, a job I would never accept if I was offered. Um, so, let's go with a couple conceits just right off the bat, so that we can go into this. Let's assume I was offered by the company the CEO position. I was given unlimited power, and I could do any a change I want within that period of time. Okay. So, let's talk about a few of the factors that would be big issues. One, this company works in a way in which there are a number of things that are in the pipeline for a period of time. So, I would have to come in and go, okay, well, all of this is chucked in the trash. So, that's going to make me enemies. Two, I would come in and I would fire the rules team for 30k and 40k. So, that would make me enemies. So, I really don't believe the corporate culture for Games Workshop is very um, interested in maintaining the company as a model slash game company. They'd rather move into media and an IP holding company. Let's just say there's a lot of corporate contempt for the customers in there. And then again, I don't get free products, so I don't care to say those things. So let's start with how I would manage this storyline stuff. All right, so let's go with the basic conceit of the fall of Cadia happens, the Great Rift opens. However, the Eldar Witch and her group do not go with the Black Templars on a journey through a hole that goes to uh, the <laughs> Ultramarines world. Instead, what happens is she, and along with a, a cohort of her followers, attack during a uh, the chaos that was going on on the planet, the area in which they were holding Gilliman, and a f battle between the uh, Ultramarine forces and the Elder break out within that chamber. And through the chaos, the Elder Witch manages to stab Gilliman, which breaks him out of the stasis, but in a weakened form. And he fights them back, and the Elder are pushed out, and, but he's in such a weakened position, they have to call up a ancient tech adapt named Call, And he brings in a suit that manages to stabilize Gilliman in this position. Now, here's the elements in which that would be a bit of a curveball. So, the Elder's attack was never something that would bring Gilliman back. He was dead. Period. What happened is that, effectively... Her god was able to puppeteer him for a short period of time in a plot that the Elder were assisting Crawl with. Crawl, being a tech heretic, wants to be able to use Gilliman, who he had dealings with in the past on a Primaris project, which I'll get to in a second, wants to have Gilliman to puppet him and use him to get his uh, did an element of control and push his creations to the front, effectively undermine the Imperium and other unsavory things. So, to give a bit of backstory there, it, during the worrying days of the Horus Heresy, the Emperor gave Gilliman an order to s produce a project that we were going to refer to as the Primaris Project. The Primaris Project wasn't actually creating better super soldiers. What it was is a renewing of the gene seed back to the current standard, or at the standard at the beginning of the Great Crusade, of the various legions gene seeds, with a number of speci specimens held in stasis. So, effectively, it has nothing to do with making newer super soldiers. Where this comes around into things is that it was mismanaged by Call, who effectively wants to weaken the one thing that's ho helping hold the tide back, the Space Marine forces. So via uh, the corpse of Gilliman, he's able to push these number of changes on them, including the Mark X Tacticus armor, because he wants to spread out the focus of the Space Marines into a number of divergent, yet somewhat similar uh, specializations. Effectively, imagine you take the tactical marine um, 
doctrine, and then you spread it out between five or six different versions of a tactical squad so that there's never really that one concentration of force. And you do this with everything. And that's what the Tacticus was a help for. Effectively, it was presented as a modernization of the armor, being able to be modular and all that, but having a number of problems that weren't presented that modular anything has, effectively, that it's not built to the same expectations, it's not as rugged, it's not as sturdy, it can have some reliability issues. Effectively, he introduces them, yes, a flexible set of armor that they can use and weapons, but they're ever more divergent and harder to maintain and, in effect, weaker in a roundabout manner so that it's not obvious. And he does this in this plot to kind of help the text heretics because he's with the Dark Mechanicus, but he's never made his uh, announcements via the number of the millennia, you know, 10 millennia is a long time, of his slow fall to this chaotic way of thinking. And this would bring us to the lion. So the lion shows up, but he doesn't come to immediate blows with Gilliman. But he never was trusting a Gilliman after the Horus Heresy, basically seeing him as a would-be usurper in time. And this leads to his true point for the Fallen. That the Fallen did rebel, but he tasked them in a way with a newer task of, via Lufer to separate them from the Dark Angels so that they could be later used to help push back whatever plotting Gilliman has. Because again, the Lion is a super long-term thinker. He's the closest to the Emperor in that regard, and in other regards. And this was his ploy to set up forces that would be separate from anything that could be changed with them or influence them. Now, some of them have fallen to chaos. Chaos got in the way because it didn't want them to be able to come together as a force and has spread them across the universe as such. And Lufar, having realized what he was truly supposed to do when he broke out, has gone in and started collecting up the Fallen. And this is why the lion has gone off going, I'm going to walk in forest, guys. Ooh, zany. And this would set us up a situation in which you have a one part of the, the Imperium against the other. They're in a weakened position. We can play that up some more and we can do that via some of the items later in part two. The other element that I would be changing is... I'd be looking at a couple things I want to change in terms of the corporation itself. So first off, I would want to put a position in that would oversee from now on and retrospectively keeping the lore of Warhammer in Fantasy 40k, 30k onward. And this would be like a lore librarian who would go in and they would go through the books and be able to, for your future publishings, say these, this is lore, or lore accurate, this is not, this is unreliable narrator, blah, 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 and be able to assist the writers with being able to keep things straight in that regard. Because it seems like the Black Library has a bit of a problem with that, let's just say. So we need to give them some help. I would then institute a yearly contest to try to drum up and get interested and bring into uh, the creative pool a writing contest so that we can get new blood into their, uh, into the writing pool and the creative pool. The other element is I would institute what I would refer to as a Warhammer Festival or Cell Festival. It'd be a once a year festival where we would put the price of a kit where it would still make profit, but would be at a drastic discount. And this could extend to Warhammer stores and F, uh, our flags that want to participate in the program. It'd be once a year. It'd be a way for people who want to save up and make a big purchase. 
but they don't want to spend as much another way or just to get people to be interested in making a big spend. It'd also be kind of a way to repay the fan loyalty and still be able to clear out some stock. So that'd be two of the things I'd want. The other thing is I would put in a mandate that basic infantry kits in every single game need to be brought down and marked down to a price of either between $25 to $35 or whatever the exchange rate is. Because uh, I don't know all the exchange rates, so you can calculate it yourself. But those would be my price point because when you are dealing with something that is more expensive than the price of the average video game or video games that someone can purchase, especially if we want to keep young blood and new people per or buying into the system, getting interested in it and playing long term and still making purchases, or starting a new army, eh, eh, we need to look at things in that manner. We need to bring some of the kit prices down. The other thing I would institute is a complete pause on price adjustments for anything inflation regarding so they're so far ahead of inflation that it's silly that they keep coming out every year and then playing poor golly guys food got more expensive now pay 80 dollars and it's like no kermit i'm not gonna do that so those would be my immediate things i would also remarry the original Space Marine line with what certain elements of the Primaris line because in reality none of the Primaris are different. They're not taller. They're not anything. They are it's literally just a reset to what the legions were like before. So I'm going to handle that part in the second one. So I hope this is a little bit easier for people to understand and i tried to make sure one wasn't making any terrible jokes seemed overly hostile and these are the things i would affect if given the ceo position which i would never actually accept because there is no way that this would ever be allowed within the corporate culture and i don't believe the company is interested in the long-term viability of the game what they're interested in is making more video games, making movies, selling books, selling posters, being an IP akin to Disney. And I think they're going to find themselves in a position like Disney does with their stock dropping and dropping as they undervalue what were the things that originally got people interested and got people caring about the, the setting. So those are my opinions. If you disagree, hey, good job for you. Um, it's nothing major, but I really think, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, there is no way to actually refocus this in some manner that has long-term thinking. I think the FOMO and the what FOMO way of thinking has taken hold. Just do yourself a favor, even if you're a Primaris fan, look at the number of pointless Primaris kits. And ask yourself, does this seem like something they're going to continue doing? Because I think it is. I think we're just going to see more and more and more as they try to push towards that idea of being an IP holding company. But uh, next part, we'll deal with how I would handle um, the miniature side of things and all of that fun stuff. What would stay, what would go. Um, so have a fantastic day. And I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't want to make it, but people wanted to see it uh, bye